Hello. Here is my overdrive unit, the Volvo one. And here is one that I salvaged some years ago from a, a Vauxhall. This one takes a slip yoke there, and this one takes uh, a yoke. So what I was wondering is what do they do on this one to mean that you don't have to have that nut like that? I need to just have a look at this back end of this thing here. So I've undone these. Now, I'm not sure quite how this works or what you are supposed to do or anything, but I need to undo this, obviously. I'm kind of not really sure what I'm doing here. This is my newly acquired Swindon's Vice, which will be the subject of a, um, you know, a bit of a rebuild at some point. But I've just found out how useful it is by tilting it sideways using the pipe jaws there to clamp that flange and I allowed it to rotate so it came against the table like that and I was able to undo that nut with my big breaker bar like that so that vice, this vice is really proving itself useful already and what I did I've just you know using gravity to assist I've just hit that like that and knocked it through and it's just just hanging on the last couple of threads now. What I'm interested in is this machined here as a potential mount. Is this drill and tappable? Is this drill and tappable? I'm looking for strong attachment points that I can attach like um, you know a torque tube sort of set up to. Obviously these are set up to be drilled and tapped for a, a mount. They're pretty universal you see these overdrives. They were made to fit lots of different things. Okay, let's uh, keep digging into it. I um, held this, held it up in the air and hit the end of the shaft with a mallet and um, this came off. There's a bearing there, look. There's a bearing there. This appears to be, you know, ground. Um, this is the speedo gear, which goes on that way round. And there's another bearing there. So there's two bearings close together supporting this shaft. What I'm kind of interested in is how hard is the centre of this shaft. If I could cut this off and drill and tap up the end, I could kind of attach that or a cut down version of that and this like that attach those and tighten them up through here like a early forward one does i can imagine this this attached to this and then them both being held on by a bolt that's what i can imagine you know i'm just trying to weigh out the possibilities but I think it would be good to keep everything as short as possible. I rubbed a file on here and it isn't hard. And I rubbed a file on one of the splines and it also isn't hard. In other words, if I can get this part off as a separate entity in a lathe, I can turn this down and um, drill and tap it so it can be attached with a bolt instead of a nut. Okay, righto. Back when there's more to show. I'm just looking at this piece. A couple of things I've noted. One, it's pretty thin. Two, um, there's a, there is a um, concentric surface machined at this end. So in other words, if I was to put it in the lathe and chuck it on that surface there clock clock this true I could skim this to make an outer concentric surface I could skim this and I could skim it right the way back to there 
if it would help. But the, what there are, there are two bosses which from the look of it they're set up so that they can be drilled in that direction like that, drilled and tapped. So they could be quite a strong attachment point. You can imagine if you had this like this, maybe a, a ring of metal there which would fit over this area here and then it could be brought and mounted there and then it could be brought and mounted onto here as well so that would all support it it would be bought, mounted to there mounted to there mounted to there mounted to there and that would be quite strong especially if it was kind of located on this whole surface here so yeah I might chuck this up skim this back machine a ring of metal see what I need to do to make this fit it and I need to get this piece onto there like that see what I need to do to make that fit there and see what I need to do to make the relationship between these pieces and this piece correct that's quite a little job isn't it that's another possibility isn't it something like that the only problem is I think in on a Ford gearbox pretty sure that this is kind of right the way back there not that far back because it would hit the bolts wouldn't it but like that's what I need to know isn't it I need to know the relationship between this the center of this axis and this surface that that's my key dimension that's my key dimension isn't it I found a bearing that goes in there I've tapped it in and this fits down against that bearing and if you look along there you can see that the diameter of that thing is, is just off the surface so I can try and measure that gap and that gives me a datum it's about let's say a sixteenth so when I'm trying to you know work out what's going to go on here this needs to actually be sitting out of there by a little bit that's just about down on the bearing and just about rotating in there so there's my thing oh look at that so <laughs> that actually is very close isn't it to that's very close to you know what it is on the thing on, on the Ford one so if this was more or less just welded to that you know you'd have to get it all squared up make a mandrel that would get them aligned that would probably be a pretty good thing so it would need like a tubular piece that goes over there it would come up here weld to that weld to that get braced to there and braced to there and there and anywhere else that could be thought of to brace it to no that, that would work I think you could even imagine it slipping over here being split and clamp clamping to it couldn't you? you could imagine it clamping to it that's close to how it was isn't it within a sixteenth you know it's similar to this so 
<laughs> yeah, cynically you could probably say it's the same or close enough for you know for it to work. Okay, look at this for a dodgy setup. <laughs> look at this way I've just got that on there. This is me kind of you know the the um need to gather knowledge and ideas overrules the need to kind of tidy up from the previous job i still got the gearbox guts from the manual box you know i've got this one here that i'm not going to use <laughs> you know i need to this is the bell airs and that's my adapter plate but the thing is I suppose what you would say is yeah but without knowing that this is going to work how what use is this if this don't work that's no good in other words you've got to do a feasibility study for the whole package not just one part of it this is looking kind of doable I think okay right I th okay I think we've got some uh, got some good things here to move forward with haven't we that goes top and bottom yeah I think that's all right I've got some ideas there okay I am really waffling now and what I need is a piece of metal that will go over there right okay no need to bore you, I will be back in a bit. I just jumped on the lathe and um, I'll show you the part. I just skimmed that diameter true and created a face here, a true face there. So when I'm kind of offering things up uh, I've got a better chance of getting things aligned it's just it, the machine the, the metal machined really nicely it isn't tough at all and what I did I've got a gearbox shaft there and I just knocked it onto the gearbox shaft to hold it so that's my first little bit of exploratory machining you can see that it's cleaned up part of that face and part of that face I didn't want to take too much off because uh, I don't want to weaken it and secondly I made sure I left like quite a big chamfer there quite a big radius there so it, it doesn't have like a stress point I'll um, I'll take it out and I'll show you what I was what I was thinking Okay, what I'm thinking is, if you can imagine I machine uh, like um, a piece of metal that this presses into and then it could be maybe welded round like that, I don't know, you know, I'm kind of just thinking of ideas. Then that piece of metal is a good fit in there, you know, th this flange could be machined off maybe, I don't know. That would go in there, that would press together and that would get them concentric. Again though, like I said, uh, it, would, it would require the use of a bolt to hold it on rather than this nut. Because once you have a socket big enough to go on that, this, I don't think this is going to work. Anyway, the idea is there, isn't it? It needs to be welded on a decent diameter so that the drive forces are easily easily um, maintained, you know, and easily contained by the weld. I just had a rummage around and I found this lump of metal, which I assume is steel. It would be big enough to bore out to fit on there. So if I skim that through, skim it back to there, 
bore that out to fit it, that would go around, go on there and be could be sort of pressed on, I suppose. And that could form the basis of the rear mount then. So all the little bits are coming together, aren't they? All the little bits are coming together. Okay, thanks very much for watching me messing about and uh, offering a few things up and having a look. And I will catch you on the next one. Hello, I'm on the lathe and um, I've just paused because I'm machining this tile shaft housing. And I'm just getting to the point where I'm getting to the end of the remnants of that. So I'm going to keep going until it cleans up as a smooth surface. But what I've done is um, I've just gone inside here on this an internal diameter that's available and then gone on with the ch a chuck and the, the, the taper on the end of the chuck goes into the bearing so it's actually running on its own bearing there so I've used a chuck rather than a centre <laughs> shoulder there Let's just see what it looks like I'm gonna leave a little shoulder there yeah that'll work okay I'm gonna call that good I only want a clean surface. I wonder if it'll just, um, I'll just give it a couple of thou. I'm not really bothered about the size. That looks alright, doesn't it? And it's got a shoulder there now. So wherever I'm, I make to put on there can go against that shoulder there. Okay, that'll do. I just wanted to put a flat surface there so that if I drill and tap there, I've got something I can bolt to. Just that was just 20 thou off there, so that, that should be okay, I think. So I've got a nice round surface there, which is, you know, coaxial to the whole unit. And I've got a nice flat surface there, and I've got two positions there I can drill and tap. So, yeah, looking good. I found this piece of pipe, and I've split it, and it was a bit big, so I've kind of bent it a bit. And I'm just skimming the bore. While it's in there, I'm going to face this side and put a little chamfer on it. But at least the bore has cleaned up. Okay. That'll do. Let's try it on the part. It'll probably be loose now. I had to take it a tiny bit bigger than I wanted to clean up and it's slightly loose but that will tighten up with a, a minimum of kind of clamp on there. The idea is that that will go there like that, this will go here like this but you can see that this is standing too far up. So in other words, this needs to be shortened. But anyway, that's that's what I've got so far. I think I need to take at least a quarter inch off it. I just want to try and clean up this side because there's plenty of wall thickness, a lot more than I need. And I'm just coming down to 
Yeah, let's just keep going. It's a bit hot. Okay, I'll uh, bring you back when there's more to show. I've got to think how to shorten it yet. Hello, right, it's looking okay. Um, I still have some more to go, but I could equally take some off this piece because you can't see it from this side. This this is in the seal, but it's not up against the bearing. If you look inside, the uh, you, well, I can see. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, there's a gap between the companion flange and the bearing. Oh, and the the good news is that just doing this hose clip up has tightened that up on there. So the idea of it clamping in place is probably a good idea. But what I would hope is that if I put this in the lathe, that this will all run concentric. So that'll be my sort of test that that will run concentric. I thought the idea of having it actually clamping on would be better than just trying to make it a close fit. At least all the forces will be concentrating right around where the bearing is. I will bring you back when there's more to show. Thanks then. Bye. Right, I've got the um, tail housing here and the adapter piece clamped to it. And I was doing the thing where I had the uh, had the tail stock in there like that to, to steady it, and I was skimming it off. So I'll back this off like this to offer in this piece. So I offered that in there like that. And it's actually at the right place now. But it wasn't quite, so I, who you knows, it was sort of out here. So I thought, oh, I'll take another skim. So I went in with the tool. And I forgot to put the tail stock in place. And the whole thing, it went flying past my left shoulder. So it went flying over here. And somehow it then ended up down there. So that was a bit, and you can see there's a bit of some boo boo marks there. Anyway, hey ho. Live to, live to tell the tale. So I've finished that now, that's, um, I've put a, um, a chamfer on the inside and a little chamfer on the outside and I would say that it is, as far as I can tell, to the right length. Okay, I just thought I'd share that with you. I didn't fancy filming it after, uh, rather, I wish I'd have been filming it when it happened. <laughs> anyway, hey-ho, back in a bit. Hello. Um... I was just trying to think of a way of trying to make sure that this ends up square and the, the only way I could think of was to put it in the lathe so that this is square against the chuck. Um, in here I have a, a piece that was turned with a flat face on it and I've got a piece of flat plate there and the thing squashed onto there. So I'm going to turn it carefully and slowly so you can see it spinning round.
and I think that I think that looks okay. So what I will do is um, try and align this like that so that this join is halfway between there and what I will do I will um, bring my welder around and give it three or four good tacks so I'll, I'll tack it in place while it's held firmly like this but th that's pretty pretty firmly held in place I might see if I can find something a little bit thicker than this that will do the same job Okay, I'm going to kind of just go with it. I've put the welds on, tack welds, and these can be welded in between as well. It looks like it runs quite true. If you have the lighting gear, it looks like it looks like it runs quite true. Whoops! Well, that's my piece of metal fell out anyway. So anyway, it looks the part, doesn't it? You know, it looks like a torque tube drive. What I think I'll do, I will. Um, leave this as it is because this can be used to mock up a sort of test fit of a torque tube drive and I, I can you know um, take account of like a brace that will go to there or there and here um, this needs to be sort of well anchored into the body of the gearbox um, and again something that goes to these studs like this I can you know you can imagine like a couple of long bosses like that and I'll make some new studs so you have a long boss there and a long boss there and a piece of metal between them and then you know, a brace going to there. It's all kind of doable, isn't it? So, that's my idea. I hope it works. Who knows? I've got to take care of the adaptation of the spline shaft onto the coupler, onto the Ford UJ. But this is my base point. And this is adjustable, this can be slid out a little bit or could be faced off and moved in a little bit. I'd like it to stay where it is because it sits up against a the shoulder there which was specifically made for that purpose. Okay, righto, back in a bit. Yeah, so I've got to get a good bead of weld all the way around there and I've got the option of putting a weld there and a weld there then this will get skimmed down and then that will go in there and then I can weld all the way around there 